grew up in a Christian home and my mum and dad uh, talked a lot about Jesus and um, you know how he's your saviour and um, it all sounded great um, but at that age um, I don't think it was very relevant to me. Um, I just you know was interested in doing what all my friends were doing and I was very easily led. I'm an easily led person I think and so instead of going to church on a Sunday eventually um, I decided that I'd just hang out with my friends and, and, and skip church and um, you know just started drinking at the age of 14 and um, you know, going out with boys and um, exams got in the way of anything um, to do with church and uh, just ambition really, you know, getting a job and um, thinking about your future and all those kind of things. There's lots of worries for a teenager in life, you know, and sure. you can push Jesus totally to the back um, yeah. and not give him a second thought. But then outside school, I think when I was outside authority, um, I would then it would be, you know, time to drink and smoke and swear and so it's sort of like being two different People yeah. almost, you know. Um, okay. so yeah. what, what was the? What would you say was the 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 moment that you made that transition from knowledge of Christ to actually asking Jesus to come into your life? What tell us about that? Um, the transition would have been. Um, it started with my sister. Uh, she wasn't in a very good place, and um, she developed this Bell's palsy, where half her face was paralysed. And I can see that it was completely devastating to her and she couldn't handle it. And so she actually cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, um, would you just heal me because I can't deal with this situation. I don't want to have this for six or seven months, like the doctors are telling me. Um, I want this to go and I'll do anything for you, you know. Right. And um, she woke up the next day and the, the feeling in her face had come back. And it just took about two weeks for her face to be completely back to normal. And the doctor said, we've got a miracle case here. This is very, very unusual. The doctors actually said that. The doctor said it was a miracle, wow. yeah. Wow. And um, Karina said, yeah, my God has healed me. Um, so she remembered the promise she made to God and said, I better go to church. You know, I think that's a good place to start. So we discovered, the, she discovered, sorry, the Lighthouse Church. And um, she started going there. And I noticed a big difference in her and she then was out reaching to me because she could see that I was in a bad place and yeah. she knew that I needed this light that she'd find um, okay. and deep down I think I knew I needed it as well but I was just sort of a bit um, dubious about it you know yeah. um, a bit scared actually to change I thought no I like I like drinking I like doing all that you know and yeah. I like I mean, partying at the weekends and what would you say I mean like now if you know, you've, you've, you've asked Jesus to come into your life, mm -hmm. and so you've made that transition. Are you still able to have fun, or is that like quenched all your fun now? Oh no, no, no. I have. I would say I have more fun now, honestly, than than what I've ever had before. I think um, being a free, like being free of fear, is the most liberating thing I've ever experienced. Right. Um, just I used to be sort of um, reliant on alcohol just to sort of be at ease with myself and and be able to sort of dance and, and have fun. Um, but now I, I do all that without the alcohol and, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's like, cool. why, yeah. you know, why, why would I want to change that? Much know? bigger high than alcohol. Much bigger high, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, I mean, the presence of God is, is, yeah. is unbelievable, the Holy Spirit. And um, I experienced that for the first time when I did an ALF course. Um, I did. It's an eight-week course where you learn about Jesus and, and that he was actually a real man and historically proven to exist. And um, I, I did that, and uh, I just saw people actually being healed right in front of me, you know, wow. on the actual course. Wow. Um, and I just thought to myself, this is real. This yeah. is actually real. So there's no question that we've seen your sister healed. We've seen other people healed. Yeah, so seen that. Yeah. Heals, okay. yeah. So we've got. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, what would you say now to people? who are watching this testimony um, about if they're considering uh, Christianity mm -hmm. or if they're just in a difficult place in their life, what would you say to them about your place? Um, I would say to them not to be afraid of making the best decision they could ever make, um, not to worry about what anyone thinks, um, to do this for themselves, to be liberated um, and accepting Jesus as your saviour is it's like being released from prison. Um, you just, you open the door of your heart, you accept him, you let him come into your heart and your mind, 
and he just cleans everything up. He just cleans, he, he, he cleans up your thoughts, your, how you think, your thought patterns. He just brings love into your life um, like you've never felt before. Um, compassion, peace, that passes all understanding. It is the best decision you'll ever make. Yeah. Just a question of opening the door and letting him Opening in. the door and letting him come into your heart, yeah. And there's a great Bible verse actually that goes, um, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and answers, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. And um, that's what I've done. I've let him just come in and just be my friend, just eat with me, think with me, do things, do life with me. And if I need his help, I ask him, you know, what do you think of this situation? And he, I just sit for a minute and listen and I hear, I hear his voice, you know. Wonderful. Fantastic.